My dad taught me to split kindling and wood. He was way better at it than I am. If you've never split firewood before, let me tell you, it is so satisfying when you whack a piece of wood. And if you've picked just the right piece to split, it practically flies apart. The wood makes these little popping and cracking sounds just before it splits apart. And I just love it so much. It's really addicting once you get into it. I have these fond memories of weekends in winter as a kid. My dad would build a fire and my mom would set homemade cinnamon rolls by the fire to raise. And my dad and I would just sit there together by the fire and watch TV. We didn't have cable or anything, so it was mostly just PBS. So a lot of this old house and Bob Ross, of course. So fires are kind of a simple joy for me. It's something I really look forward to in the winter and the dogs love them too. I don't think I've ever met a single dog that didn't love to curl up by a cozy fire. It's some primal instinct, I guess. I can just picture a group of humans thousands of years ago huddled by a roaring fire, cooking and staving off the cold and the first dogs cautiously approaching. Maybe that's not how it actually went. I mean, who knows? But that's the story I like and I'm sticking with it. Naturally, when my dogs went to cuddle by the fire, it was photo op time. I loved the way their faces glowed by the firelight. And you probably guessed it, the artist in me naturally said, I have to paint that. Now I'm kind of lazy about carefully laying out proportions and figuring out vanishing points. If this was a canvas painting, I would probably be more particular during the layout, making sure that the proportions were correct. I know that it matters, but for this sketch, all I really cared about was playing around with color. So if you really look closely, it's a bit wonky and not super detailed. But I think it's also sort of interesting in a way unless you're a total stickler for the details, in which case you'll probably hate it. Well, anyway, you may have noticed it's been a while since I've posted a full-length video. I've been a bit preoccupied lately with other things besides painting. I have still been doing painting, but it's just been really busy. I got a couple of new sketchbooks at Christmas and some other art supplies with gift cards. But there have just been a lot of things around the house lately that have needed to be fixed or cleaned or just needed my attention. And after a while it all starts to pile up. I do like to fix things myself if I can. It seems like every time you have to call someone it ends up being like $500 or $1000 and it can be a lot. And this wood burning stove was actually one of the things that went bad recently. I know it's not necessarily the most pressing thing since we have gas for heat primarily, but I was really looking forward to having a cozy fire at Christmas. So a couple of weeks before Christmas, I lit some fires and I noticed that the wood was not really burning very well. And then it started to begin to smoke really badly. So what ended up happening is there was no fire on Christmas Day, which was a major bummer. This particular stove is a high efficiency EPA certified model. So it's kind of a more complex piece of engineering than a normal fireplace is. It has these ceramic honeycombs in them called catalytic combustors or just catalysts. And they function a lot like a catalytic converter in a car does. The wood smoke enters the catalyst and the smoke and particulate matter is burned a second time before it's released out the chimney. So the result is a clean burning stove with fewer emissions. 
When it's operating correctly, you shouldn't see any visible smoke coming out of the chimney at all. So when it's all working correctly, it's a pretty cool piece of engineering. But over time, the catalysts can become degraded, and they also need to be cleaned regularly to maintain good airflow and combustion. So when I saw that the wood wasn't burning well, I had a pretty good idea that the stove needed to be cleaned. When I actually got in the firebox to clean the catalysts, I discovered that they had begun to crumble and collapse. So without the catalyst in operation, it wasn't safe or legal to burn any longer, and they needed to be replaced. If you go by the manual, swapping out the catalysts, in theory, should have been a quick and easy repair. The cast iron housing in the stove weighs about a million pounds, which is the part that contains the catalyst. And yay, it was also warped and wedged in after probably 30 years of fires. Catalytic combustors aren't exactly the kind of thing you can just walk into Lowe's or Home Depot to get, so I also had to order the parts online. And the waiting game ensued. I didn't record the glamorous process of disassembling and reassembling the stove, but picture, if you will, a little chimney boy from a Dickens novel, and you'll get the gist of it. I was really eager to get the stove repaired while it was still cold because I also installed new gasketing and cement that needed to be heat cured. And obviously I didn't want to do that in the middle of the summer. So about mid-February, I finally got the whole thing assembled and ready to burn again. And when I finally lit the fire, it burned so well. I didn't have to baby it or anything to get it going. It was just going really well. And I was so ridiculously proud. I guess that's one of the things I like about doing DIY projects. It's just the satisfaction of having done something myself. So anyway, that is the backstory behind this sketch. So the night before I painted this, I watched a documentary about Jackson Pollock. Actually, it was about a truck driver who believed she bought a Jackson Pollock at a thrift store for something like $5, and her fight to get the work authenticated and accepted by the mainstream art market. Since the painting didn't have a provenance tracing back to his studio, the art market rejected the painting. I have absolutely no idea if her painting was real or fake, but it was a really interesting and kind of funny documentary. And I think it probably should still be available free on YouTube depending on when you watch this. Anyway, I guess I had Jackson Pollock on the brain because I finished off the painting with some paint splatters. I thought the orange splatters looked kind of cool, sort of like little embers flying around. Well, anyway, so that's one of the things I've been up to lately. I've got a lot of fun ideas for videos and projects and paintings. I just need to actually make them. I'm going to make an effort to be more consistent going forward so that you guys don't totally forget about me. And hopefully I'll see you all again very soon. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Bye.